Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Friday Bible Study. I'm Pastor Tyrone. I have Pastor Steve with me, and we will continue Proverbs 23, Part 3. But before we start, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time in your word. Thank you for bringing us all here safely and just getting us all on the message today. And we just uh, surrender this whole study to you. We ask you to anoint it and bless it. Give us much revelation. Continue to give us your wisdom and knowledge and understanding as the Proverbs show us and guide us. And uh, just bless this time together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Previously, previously, we talked about Proverbs 23, verse 13. And it says, do not withhold correction from a child, for if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. Amen. Amen. Do you have any words on that? You beat him with a rod. Don't <laughs> spare the rod. <laughs> spare the rod, spoil the child. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Well, we had lots of conversation on that. Yes, we did. We All right. From last week. Verse 15 says, My son, if your heart is wise, my heart will rejoice. Indeed, I myself. Amen. Praise the Lord. And verse 17, it says, Do not let your heart envy sinners, but be zealous for the fear of the Lord all the day. Amen. Okay, moving forward. Let's continue with Proverbs 23, verse 19. And it says, my son, oh, hear my son, and be wise, and guide your heart in the way. Praise the Lord. The way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Very good, Sister B. <laughs> we know the way is Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the way, the truth, and the life, as Sister Priscilla just should tell us. You can never go wrong following the Lord. The way. His way. Absolutely. And it says, guide your heart in the way. You know, that's not leaning on your own understanding or our own thoughts or our own ideas, but just opening our hearts to follow the Lord. And that is the way. That is yeah. the way. The narrow yeah. way is the way. Yes. Yes. Any other comments? Okay. So supporting scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9. Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, and teach them to your children and to your grandchildren. Amen. 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 This verse. Yeah, the truth is we need God to keep us on track. It's it's uh we need to be asking God for all these things to happen in our lives because yeah, we just as much as we want to, without his help, without his spirit. We'd all go astray. Praise the Lord. This verse is talking about for him helping us not to go out of the way and to keep our hearts on focus on him. And not only that, but to teach our children and grandchildren. And we're teaching them we won't have to use the rod because they'll know, they understand, and we should keep them. Keep them on the straight and narrow path. The way is as we follow the way. Amen. Any other comments? You know, I think about Pilgrim Progress when they said they were on the path. They used to go this other direction. And he said, won't this lead us out of the way? And sure enough, it did. 
it got them into trouble. And uh, they wanted to take an easy path instead of staying in the way. It's interesting you mentioned that, Luke, because what that demonstrates is our nature. Nobody in that in that movie went straight down the path. Amen. They all went astray here, went astray there, because that's our nature as humans, our flesh. Right? Amen. But what we see in that story is that he made it to the end, even though he went astray here, down on this path and that path. God kept him going. He kept seeking God and the way, and because of that, he made it. Amen. Absolutely. Even if we do make mistakes. Thank God for God's mercy. Yeah, and they made a lot of mistakes along the way, but they made it. And so do we. And so do we. Absolutely. Any other comments? Okay, verses 20 and 21. It says, do not mix with wine bibbers or with gluttonous eaters of meat. For the drunkards and the glutton will come to poverty, and drowsiness will clothe the man with rags. Any comments? I guess I'm in trouble because my honey says I gotta get a belly now, so I must be glad. So drinkers and basically people who go to excess of all kinds of things, yeah. consuming everything. Yeah. It doesn't say you can't drink. It just says don't drunk. And can't well, or not overeat. It shouldn't. Yeah. You know, but yeah, all in moderation. Duration. Food, drink, everything. All in moderation. Any other comments? world is like this and if we become equally yoked with that we'll, we'll actually be the ones pulled away right yes we will all right supporting scripture matthew chapter 11 verse 19 the son of man came eating and drinking and they say look a glutton and a wine bibber <laughs> a friend of tax collectors and sinners but wisdom is justified by her children oh man And Jesus was not following the legalistic, uh, traditional way of those rabbis and so forth. He was just like a regular person, eating and having some wine and all that. But And he was around people who were sinners and tax collectors because that's who he came for. Yeah. And so... It says those that are not sick don't need a physician, but those that are sick, they do. Yeah. The tax collectors and the sinners, they need a they need they need a physician. But it's important to remember that he was led by the spirit and not just hanging out to win souls because hey, may I can just befriend them and and convince them it doesn't work like that, right? No. Yeah. God will send us amongst tax collectors and sinners and wine bibbers and gluttons or whatever. But if if God is sending us, we're not gonna be we're not gonna stumble. If we try on our own, it's very likely we'll stumble. Yeah. Won't have that wisdom that is saying. It'll just be our own works. Comments? Anyone else?
Okay, verse 22. Listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Mm. Amen. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's reminding me. I'm getting old. Oh. Mm -hmm. Listen to your father. And do not despise your mother. Any comments? It's one of the one of the Ten Commandments: to honor your father and your mother. Right? Yes, it is. Yeah. That is the the first commandment with promise. And spiritually, our heavenly Father. Was the one who born us, we were born again, right? Amen. And the mother is like the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we can get mad at God. We can, it's very, it's very po possible for all of us to do. Oh, um, you do all the people do all the time. You do get mad at God. Uh... Comments? Well, yes, the thing that comes to my mind uh, on the second line of this verse here, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Now, you know, I had lots of respect. I'm thinking of my own mother. And and as she got older, of course, my mother developed Alzheimer's, and, and that's a whole different ball game there. But to older people... They 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 are not as sharp, and so sometimes we can we, we we cannot show as much respect because we we sense that they're not as sharp and and so, but I don't know about despising them because you know it's your mother and you know that uh, she deserves respect no matter what no matter how sharp she is, and so, uh, I, and 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 I, I always realize that, but I I also can see that at times you might want to look different upon someone when they start to not be as sharp like I am now. <laughs> not as sharp as I was when I was a younger man. Um uh, so so yes, that's those are my comments. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments? All right, this supporting scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And the opposite of that is... If you don't honor your father and your mother, it may not be you may not live long on the earth. Will not go well with you. Yeah. And in my family, we had a good example of that, a personal example of, of one of my brothers who who disrespected his dad, and he died a young man. He died a really accidental death. It was you something you don't normally it wasn't a you know uh uh he didn't die in a bed somewhere he died in a tree believe it or not in a tree hanging to a a, a, a live wire uh so or or an antenna that had fallen on a live, live wire is what killed my brother jesse after he had uh, choked my dad and in front of all of us kids and, and uh, right there in the house. And and we didn't see him for many years after that because he, he left out the door and he didn't come back. And it was years later when we found out he came back to visit us. And, and then a few years after that, 
he was gone. Um, he he died an accidental death, one that you wouldn't expect. Amen. Well, that's not the only story I've heard either. Thank you, Pastor Rufus, but I've heard others as well. So there are many. Yeah, it will not go well with you. Yeah, spiritual parents, you're right? Father, Spirit, of the Lord. and loves, yeah. Pastors and leaders, and and we are the honor of those that are over us for sure. Those that God had put over us. Got to honor them. Any other comments? Okay, verse 23. By the truth, by the truth, and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Amen. Mm. Mm. by the truth interesting Any comments um, I know that the word says come to me and buy without price right so buy without price tells me that it's not like you have to pay for it or whatever, but seek the truth. And it's it's like you're going to buy it, but it really doesn't cost you anything. You're just seeking the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The well, Jesus is the truth, right? Right. So I'm thinking the ten virgins, the ones who needed more oil, but had to go buy it. But it's not. It doesn't come at a price in the sense of that. God gives us everything we need if we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Amen. Also wisdom, instructions, and understanding. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Supporting scripture, Matthew 13, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Amen. Buy so the field. The yeah. Go ahead, Pastor Rufus. Well, I, I remember that verse, uh, buy the field, and I've, I've done it. I've used that in, in, in lessons uh, several times. And uh, I've heard it in a lesson uh, at least once <laughs> by the field. One of my teachers emphasized that message in in uh, the School of Evangelism. Uh, by the field. <laughs> and that's, that's the kingdom. And that's what you want to want to give all you have to. And that's how you buy it. You give yourself to it. Give yourself to the Lord. And Amen. it's it's he's he's that treasure. And no one can see it but you. <laughs> Him, but you. As far as well, of course there's others, but but in, in, in this respect, he's he's like that. He's like a, a hidden treasure in your heart. He's a hidden treasure because no one can, you know, really see him. Can, they can know that you love the Lord, but they can't see him. It's because he's hidden in you. Amen. Yeah, this verse is talking about you know, all the full surrender means letting go of everything, right? Right. So, uh, and God shows us the things he wants us to let go of through time, right? Mm -hmm. Not all at one time, although 
you know, that would, well, well, I won't get into that, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, over time, God says, okay, this is, this is something that I want you to make a choice here. You want this or you want me, whatever, right? And so one after another, he reveals all the things that we have to let go of. And fortunately, we can do it with his help. Yeah. You can't do it without his help, that's for sure. That's for sure. Amen. Any other comments? Okay, verse 24 and 25. It says, the father of the righteous will greatly rejoice, and he who begotten the wise child will delight in him. Let your father and your mother be glad, and let her who bore you rejoice. Amen. Comments. Well, definitely, I mean, in the natural, right? That's what parents always want to see their kids doing the right thing and being good and, and so forth, right? Prospering and yeah, I mean, doing all the staying out of trouble and that kind of stuff. Right. You yeah. know, being a responsible grown up and, yeah. you know, a good member of society. But again, I go back spiritually, our Heavenly Father greatly rejoices when we walk in wisdom, right? Yeah. And uh, the Holy Spirit, right? So we can please God and we can also make him angry and or sad or grieved, right? It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So um So it's about walking in his way or, you know, doing what is pleasing to him. Right. As you know, our children in the natural, if they do things that are pleasing to us, we have to do things that are pleasing to God. That's for sure. Right. But we can't do it without him. I certainly can't. <laughs> we can't we can't do it without we can try and try and try but unless God is in it then we just can't do it you know, and there's gladness and joy for us as well in this you know when we please God it just makes us happy and joyful amen yeah. Or being a spiritual parent. Yes. You know, as an elder and seeing the people you minister to do walk in the way of the Lord, right? Amen. We see that. Walking in wisdom. We see the work that God is doing in them. Through us. And it makes you, you rejoice. Yes, absolutely. Pray for people and God answers our prayers and does miracles. We rejoice. Amen. Any other comments? Right. Supporting scripture, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. Amen. Amen. We can grieve God if we're not doing his will. I'm an expert at it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess just as bad. <laughs> hmm? But God is loving and he forgives us. He corrects us and he rebukes, you know, he chastens us. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. 
back to your movie example uh, Pilgrim's Progress where uh, uh, Abaddon what's that what's his name the devil basically um, Abaddon yeah something yeah. like that yeah he accuses him like the devil does saying mm -hmm. you failed so many times right that's right and he said that makes his grace all the better or something like all that. the sweeter all yeah. the sweeter right yeah yeah i can relate <clears throat> but yeah we get attacked with that too oh we do all the time any other comments okay first Oh, another example, another, example. another supporting scripture, Proverbs 27, verse 11. My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may, may answer him who reproaches me. The accuser, the devil, right? That's right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Of comments. All right, verse 26. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Praise the Lord. Give me your heart. And comments. You know, when the ways of God, everything starts in the heart. You know, all the work he does is in the heart. This is why he wants us to give us his heart. Give us our hearts. So he can change it. He can get the things that's in our hearts out. And walk in his ways. And follow him. This is what God does for us. It's a spiritual thing. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? <clears throat> yes, I, and I I believe what is part of this is saying that, um, my son, when you give me your heart, your eyes will observe my ways. I, I believe that's in, in here. I mean, it doesn't say that, but and let your hearts observe my ways. So when when we give the Lord our heart, uh. Well, it says how I let your eyes observe my ways. Then, then, then you are you are attentive to the Lord and His will, and yes. and so you you observe His ways. Amen. When you, do that, when you Amen. give your heart. Praise the Lord. Well said, Pastor Rufus. Other comments? Supporting scripture, Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 through 39. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Comments? Probably controversial for some, but th this is... Um, This is the price. This is, you know, this is the selling of everything and buying the field, really, right? Amen. We want life the way we want it. We lose it. But we give up our plans, our desires, and live the life he wants for us. We get eternal life. Praise the Lord. We get a blessed life here as well. 
Yes. Was was persecution. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, don't exclude the pain, suffering, and persecution. No. <laughs> Still, we wouldn't want to trade it, trade it for anything else. No, we wouldn't. But that's the part of losing your life because you can always try and go back. But if you're willing to suffer these things for Christ's sake, you will find it. You will find life. Life he has for all of us. We cannot love anything more than our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what, you know, loving your father, your mother, your daughters, your sons more than him, we can't. It's not saying we can't love them. It's just saying we can't love them more than God. Because if we do, we won't be able to lose our life. We won't be able to sacrifice and surrender everything to him and follow him. We just won't. It's just how it goes. But, but if we can, then we will have eternal life. Amen. Yeah, he's just looking for a willing heart. He does the best. That's why they said when the rich young ruler couldn't give up his possessions, they said, who then can be saved? He said, with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Any other comments? Did you want to have Verse 27, for a hearted is a deep pit, and a seductress is a narrow well. I think she's there. Seductress? Seductress. That's Sister P's attention. <laughs> In comments. <laughs> This is all the devil's playground, right? It's not yeah. literally just about person, right? Women, no, no, whoever. Yeah. This is the works of darkness here. And the devil tries to seduce us to operate in the flesh and turn away from God. Yep. Absolutely. And then you end up in a deep pit or a narrow well and belly of a fish that's when you have time to meditate with, and we'll seek God and experience his amazing mercy Amen but don't volunteer for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other comments Supporting scripture, Proverbs 22, 14, the mouth of an immoral woman is a deep pit. He who is abhorred by the Lord will fall there. Amen. 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 I'll focus on the Lord and we won't fall into the pit. Amen. Pride is one of the greatest things, though. Let he, him who thinks he stands. Um, says, but lest he fall, right? Right. Um, God allows us to fall into pits if we're walking in pride. He'll bring us down like Nebuchadnezzar, right? Right. Oh. Amen. Another comments? Twenty-eight. She also lies in wait as for the for victim, and increases the unfaithful among men. Amen.
say the devil's always waiting yeah, for a faithful. crack to get through there. He's always waiting for an opening. A moment. Or own to attack. To cause us to fall and do something that's not of God. The devil's always lying and waiting. This is why we have to stay close to our God and stay focused on him. He's always attacking those that follow the Lord. He lies and waits for them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any comments? We know okay. the devil is like a roaring lion who seeks to devour those. Um, and the devil, you know, sometimes all these references to she and women, uh, it goes the other way too. Men can be um, plotting for to find their victims among women. And... Um, you know, it's just the devil is. He is he is looking to to stop us. He's looking to uh keep us from growing spiritually, and he does it in so many ways. The only protection is to be under in the shadow of the wings of the Almighty God and and to trust Jesus to to give us all of his wisdom, not our own wisdom, but his wisdom. <clears throat> um, right also, uh, Joanna, this word she in Hebrew is not necessarily uh, in what? reference to a what? woman. No, it's it's it could be like, for instance, wisdom is 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 a neuter noun, a neuter word and but it's it's always referred to as well not always but it's usually referred to as she she because it's it it's it's not it's neither man nor woman it's a a uh uh the, the hebrew dialect don't have a a uh a word for uh a neuter word for uh, mm -hmm. For, 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 for a human, for something, either is either a man or a woman, but is either uh, something is either male or female. A person is either male or female, but there's no neuter noun for a um, what what you would refer to wisdom is. I can't. It, it's a. I can't think of the word for it, but. Uh, uh, I will, and I'll get back to you on it. Uh, okay. You're right, Sister Joanna. Just because it says she doesn't also mean that man or men or him, they they're they don't do these same things because they do. So let us not be deceived or be, you know, convicted that we're just picking on women in general. Men do do the same things. Mm -hmm. They have. They have, they are, you know, they lie in wait, they prey on women, they people, and, you know, they do, they do do this. But we're talking about this in a, like Pastor Rufus was saying, in a spiritual context of wisdom as being a she. Wisdom is referred to as a she in the Bible. And so... Um, so is the devil. And so is the devil referred to as a she in the Bible as well. So those are the two contrasts that we're talking about now. We're, we're not talking about women. We're talking about the devil. We're talking about wisdom. And, and those are the two things that we are focused on. In this on. case, it's the devil. In this case, it's the devil, right? The devil lies and waits for a victim, mm -hmm. you know, and it increases the unfaithful among men. It waits for doors to be open to attack. Mm -hmm. To kill, steal, and destroy, because that's what the devil does. That's the devil's plans all the time. So uh, 
So yeah, yeah this this she is the devil. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to make that clear, Sister Joanna. Right. Or oh, some some concept that's neither male nor female. It's, yes. It's, it's an abstract concept. And it's it's referred to they, they use she for it rather than um uh, because it's 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 neither male male nor female. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Any other comments? According to scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets, whose hands are fetters. He who pleases God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be trapped by her. Amen. Amen. Talk about the traps and the snares of the devil. Yep. This is truly talking about we can see you know Solomon knows he was you know truly deceived and was trapped but he who pleases God shall escape her we pray we give it to him we come to him when the devil's attacking us, mentally, physically, or wherever it is. And we can escape. He will set us free. Yes, he will. Praise the Lord. He will set us free. Amen. Any other comments? Okay, verse 29. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contention? Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Amen. Who? Who? <laughs> Who's who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody answer that who? Who's in bad shape? <laughs> yeah, who's in bad shape? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorrow, woe, contentions, complaints, wounds without cause. Oh, Redness of eyes. Yeah, he's in bad shape. He's in bad shape, that's for sure. Yep. Yeah. It's not a she this time. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Well, I guess the next verse is going to tell us who that is. But uh, meanwhile, we have First Samuel twenty-five verses thirty-six through thirty-eight as uh, as our supporting scripture. Now, Abigail went to Nabal, Nabal. And there he was, full, holding a feast in his house, like a, the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunk. Therefore she told him nothing, little or much, until morning light. So it was in the morning when the wine had gone from Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became like stone, like a stone. And it happened, happened after about 10 days that the Lord struck Nabal and he died. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, in this case, it was Nabal. <laughs> that was Nabal. That's yeah. the who. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he never should have disrespected David. You know, that was his problem. When David sent the servants there, he beat them and he beat his servants and he did all these bad things. And, you know, he didn't honor David as being the king. And, you know, 
we know David was going to grab his army and go and wipe him out. But, of course, Abigail stopped him from doing that. And um, we know that the Lord, as she says, he, he says the Lord came to him and stopped him. And he just gave this to the Lord. So woe to him. Woe to Nabal. Because he, um, he was struck, turned to stone, and died. Amen. Amen. Verse 30. Those who linger long at the wine, those who go in search of mixed wine. Yeah, I guess that's the answer to the question <laughs> that we had. Let me go back here. Oh, yeah, to this one. So yeah. who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Those who yep. linger long at the wine, though that give you red eyes and a headache. Yes, you will. Hang over. Those who go in search of mixed wine. All to them. And I think wine can mean more than just drinking alcohol. It's it's uh, drinking things that will intoxicate you spiritually, that will things that are not of God. This is not just wine. This is other things. Another comment. All right, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 says, And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, be filled. Let the spirit take over your take over everything. Take over your heart and your mind, and be filled with the spirit, not with alcohol, uh, uh, because that's going to just take you further away from God, and the spirit will draw you in closer. Well, it says, "Do not be drunk." It's difference between having a glass of wine and being drunk. Unless a glass of wine makes you drunk. Like yeah, that's people. a good one. <laughs> well, that is true, too. A sip can make you drunk. Okay, verses 31 and 32. It says, do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup and it swirls around smoothly. At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Amen. Amen. That's some strong wine. In the comments. Again, that's why I think this is more than just about wine, right? This is, yeah, this is spiritual, right? There's a lot of enticing things that the devil throws at us, right? It looks good, and all the way from the tree in the Garden of Eden, right? Amen. It, it looks good, and it, one to make one one word. Uh, all the temptations of this world look they look good but ultimately uh, it's like, like a serpent that stings like a viper yeah it kills our, our souls now remembering the proverbs where it says that all that went down to her were strong men mm. so to me that, that means that 
trying to fight temptation on our own strength is ultimately a losing battle, as we heard a couple months ago or weeks. Yes. You know, it's, it's running to the one who can overcome all of that. That's how we overcome all these temptations, all these attacks, is by running to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because we know he can overcome. Yes, we do. Supporting scripture, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. It says, wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. <clears throat> Amen. Wine is a mocker? That's what it says. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Well, I'm gonna not gonna mock. <laughs> Wine causes you to think you're somebody that you're not. That's and, the spirit. Yeah, and that's that's the mocker. That makes it a mocker. Strong drink is a brawler. Well, <laughs> it makes you want to fight. <laughs> yep, takes you to another level. Yes. Yes, it will. Oh, these are not good spirits. That's for sure. They do call these things spirits for a reason. Wine and spirits. Wine and spirits. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other comments? I think this is our last verse. Verse 33. Your eyes will see strange things. And your heart will utterly perverse things. <clears throat> when you're drinking, you uh, see strange things and you <laughs> say strange things. Pete Elton's <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> your eyes will see strange things and your heart will utter perverse things. Well, just what you were saying, Pastor Rufus. You start saying stuff and seeing stuff. Hmm. Room starts spinning and words start to slur. Yeah. Can't walk and see. <clears throat> yeah, well, I can say I've been drunk a time or two. Hmm. Any comments? Well, we know it's time to pray then. Well, it's... Can't hear you, Pastor Rufus. I say that is a time for prayer for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you get yes, like that. Yes. Yeah, we need help. Yes, we do. When you get there. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely. Yeah, only God can help you, too. That's for sure. All right. And supporting scripture, Proverbs chapter 2, verses 10 through 14. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, Discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. To deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perversity of the wicked. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. Any comments?
That was the last verse. Yeah, I was just thinking like there is a when when the times that we're we are flowing in the spirit and we're seeking the Lord and His Word and all that we do, we find peace, we find strength, find all that. But then we're we have flesh. We're in this world, and and there's times that we're all just tossed around uh, and going through so many things, but. All we got to do is cry out and ask him and he brings us back. He brings to that solid rock where we find peace. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, we do. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, there's more. Verses 34 and 35. These are the last two verses. Yes, you will be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea or like one who lies at the top of the mass, saying, they have struck me, but I was not hurt. They have beaten me, but I did not feel it. When shall I awake that I may seek another drink? <laughs> wow. about <laughs> Don't remember what happened. Um, Can't remember. Yeah. Don't feel anything. Don't wow. say anything. Did you say something? We can't hear you. No, didn't say anything. Oh, okay. You're drunk. That, <laughs> that person's in bad shape. <laughs> that reminds me of my Navy days. Seen a lot of that right there. Yeah, I've seen that too. Don't remember what happened. Got these marks and all this, but I didn't feel it. I was feeling sore today. I'm not talking about myself. But seen a lot of that. Yeah. Wow. I've seen a lot of this as well. All right, let's see, we got a supporting scripture here. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 16 through 20. And when he had brought him down, there they were spread out all over, over all the land, eating and drinking and dancing mm -hmm. because of all the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. Then David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Not a man of them escaped, except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. And David took all the flocks and herds, they had driven before those other livestock and said, this is David's spoil. Amen. Amen. Spoil. Spoil is, uh, it's, it's like their gold, their silver, their booty. Yeah. Of course, that can also have. <laughs> yeah. Like reward for his efforts. Possessions, yes. Yeah. But had they not been drunk and caroling and having a good time, they might have put up a better fight. <laughs> so this was the Amalekites were like, the Amalekites were like this. They were they were in that state that we just talked about in the last mm -hmm. verses. <laughs> they couldn't even I'm sure they were surprised to see David and an army coming at them. They couldn't mm -hmm. even lift up their Knives and swords and shields and bows because they were too drunk to do it. Well, they were born to lose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Any comments before we close? Good lesson, Thank Pastor. Thank you. Yes, thank Welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you all.
Lord, we just thank you for just bringing us all here this evening, and we just thank everyone for being here. We thank you for putting it in our hearts, and we uh, just pray that you write these words and the tablets of our hearts, continue to just bless us with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we all learned this evening, and uh, continue to just know that we can do none of these things without you. So we just help us to just continue to keep our focus on you, and you will change our hearts. You will bless us. You will help us as we go through this journey. Keep us away from any works of darkness. Give us a good night's sleep tonight and get us ready to just walk with you tomorrow and give us a wonderful, blessed Sabbath day. And um, we pray for the Sabbath message and just um, help us all just be at peace tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.